Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at 15 scenario-based Linux interview questions along with their answers. Now, these scenarios are designed to mainly test your uh, real-world problem-solving skills and also give you a, a deeper understanding of the Linux system administration. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question I have is, uh, you need to find out why a server is running slowly and what steps would you take so for this we can start off by checking the overall load on the system so for this we can make use of the uh, top command or the h top command which will uh, basically look at the usage of your cpu and also memory and then identify any processes which are consuming excessive resources so when we run this h top or the top command this will give us the cpu utilization and the memory utilization for uh, the respective processes and we can look at that to see which process is consuming uh, more resources or uh, we can also make use of your io stat command and the io top command to check the disk input uh, uh, output we can make use of the free hyphen m command to check the uh, memory usage uh, df hyphen h command to check for uh, the disk space utilization we can also check for any network issues by making use of the net start command or the ss command and then finally we can review the system logs which are available in the slash var slash log path for any errors or any warning so that's basically how we can uh, troubleshoot the slowness of the system so we have lots of options with lots of commands that are available uh, which can be used to get an understanding of uh, why the system is slow the next question we have is a user's home directory is filling up with disk space on the root partition how would you resolve this so for this we will need to first check the disk usage of the user so for this we can uh, make use of the command which is du sh and then the path of the user directory and this command will help us to identify the large files or directories that are available within the uh, path if possible we can move these large files or the directories to another partition which has more space by making use of the mv command or the rsync command other option that we can uh, look at is advising the user to delete the files that are no longer needed or uh, compress the unnecessary files so that you know the space can be released uh, on the user's home directory so basically uh, looking at options that can uh, reduce the space uh, either delete the files that are no longer needed or compress them or move them to another partition if the files are needed the next question we have is you need to secure a web server against common vulnerabilities what measures would you take so for this we'll have to ensure that all the softwares are up to date by making use of the respective package manager so uh, if you're on ubuntu then we can use apt if you're on red hat centos then we can use yum so by using this command we can make sure that the packages are always up to date uh, we can also configure a firewall by making use of ip tables or firewall d uh, disable any unnecessary services and remove the default files also implement HTTPS by making use of your SSL or TLS certificate. So we can make use of let's encrypt or another CA to get the certificates and implement HTTPS. Uh, we have also tools like fail to ban, which can be used to block any malicious IP addresses and also configure C Linux or app armor for enhanced security. So that's basically how we can secure our a uh, web server from uh, uh, vulnerabilities so we have options we can put in firewalls we can block ip addresses we can make use of uh, enhanced security to uh, basically protect the web server the next question we have is the ssh service on your so server is being targeted by brute force attacks what steps would you take to mitigate this so for this uh, one option we have is to change the default ssh port which is your 22 so change ssh port from 22 to something less commonly used and we can change that in the slash etc slash ssh slash ssh hd underscore config file so uh, in that file you can go ahead and uh, change the default port number for your ssh 
um, implement key based authentication and disable the password authentication so users will no longer be able to use any password authentication they will need to have the key pair to authenticate to the server use fail band to block any malicious ip addresses after a certain number of failed logins so if the user is trying to log into the server and after a certain number of failed attempts the the ip address should be blocked no one should be the user should not be able to log in from that ip address and only allow specific ip addresses to connect to the server uh, and we can configure that by making use of your ip tables or ufw so that will allow only specific ips to connect to the server so that way we can uh, prevent uh, uh, brute attacks on the server the next question we have is you need to automate backups of a directory to a remote server how would you do it so for this we can make use of the rsync for very efficient uh, file transfers and then we can also set up ssh based authentication between the local machine and the remote machine so basically from your source to your destination machine we can uh, set up ssh authentication uh, between them uh, then we will write a script that will run the rsync command with your desired options and then schedule that script to run by using a cron job um, that is you know you can use the cron tab hyphen e to set up your cron job that will run the script on a schedule whatever you have defined and it will start um, taking a backup of your data and pushing it push it to the remote server whatever you have configured the next question we have is a critical service has crashed and it won't restart what steps do you take to troubleshoot and resolve the issue so for this we will need to check the overall status and the logs of the service so for this we can make use of the command uh, system ctl status and the service name and the other command we have is your journal ctl hyphen new service name so this will give us the uh, status of your service along with the logs of the service uh, then we can also look at if there are any configuration errors or there are any dependencies that are missing for uh, the service uh if there are any configuration errors we can verify that by making use of uh, basically validating your configuration file syntax so if it's your nginx then we can make use of the nginx t command if it's your apache then we can make use of your apache ctl config test command which will basically check the syntax of your configuration files and uh, any issues that we find we will need to resolve those issues and then restart the service by making use of your system CTL restart service name. So basically, check the status, check the logs, identify the issues, resolve that issue, uh, make sure the configuration file syntax is correct, and then restart the service. The next question we have is your server's time is out of sync, causing issues with applications. How would you fix this? So for this, we can install and configure uh, NTPD or crony to synchronize time with NTP server. So two options, NTPD or crony, which can be used to synchronize the server's time. Uh, we can make use of this command, which is your NTPQ hyphen P to check the status of your NTP peers. And then we need to ensure that the time zone is correct by making use of this uh, time date CTL command. So basically we will need to update the time zone. We'll need to update the time so that uh, it does not cause any issues with the application. The next question we have is you need to create a new user and ensure they have no shell access. How would you do this? So for this, we can make use of the user add command. So whenever we talk about uh, creating new users in Linux, we can make use of the user add command. Now for your um, no shell login, we can use this option, which is a hyphen S option to uh, set the user's uh, shell. So in this case, if you don't want to give a uh, shell access, then we can either make use of the slash s bin slash no login option, or we can make use of the slash bin slash false option. So example command would be user add hyphen s slash s bin slash no login and then the name of the user. So this will create the user, but it will not give any access to the shell. The next question we have is your server is running out of memory and starting to swap heavily. What actions would you take? So one, uh, the first thing we will need to do is identify uh, which process is um, uh, taking up 
too much of memory space. So for this, we can either make use of the top command or ps uh, ox hyphen hyphen sort, and then uh, based on the percentage, basically on the memory, we're telling it to sort, and that will tell us the process which is you know very uh, memory hogging and it's occupying too much of uh, memory. Uh, then we can consider stopping or restarting those processes. So sometimes you know, restarting the process can also release the uh, memory. Then uh, we can also think of increasing the swap space by creating a new swap file if it's required. So this would be the command. Um, here we can use this command to create our uh, swap file. Uh, optimize the application memory usage or add more physical memory to the server. That's another option we can think of. So either, um, so check the process which is consuming more memory, restart those processes or just stop those processes, um, increase the swap uh, space or uh, increase the physical memory on the server. These are some of the options that we can use to uh, optimize the memory utilization. The next question we have is you need to restrict the user's disk usage. How would you implement this? So for this, we can make use of disk quotas. So first, we will need to enable uh, the quotas on the file system. So for this, we can modify the slash etc slash fs tab file and then remount the uh, file system. Then we can use the ed quota to set user specific disk quotas and then quota on to enable these quotas. And then we can check the usage with the quota. So basically, uh, we can set uh, limitations um, on the disk usage for specific users by making use of the disk quotas option. And we'll need to define this in the slash etc slash fs tab file. The next question we have is your service needs to start on boot. How do you ensure this? So for this, we will need to enable the service by using the system CTL enable service name. And uh, this will make sure the service starts at boot time as well. So this basically creates the necessary siblings for the service to start on boot. And then we can uh, verify whether the service has been enabled or not by making use of the system CTL is hyphen enabled and the service name. So if the service has been enabled, it will tell that it, it's enabled. And if not, it will tell that it is disabled. So we can use this to make sure that even if the system is rebooting for any reason, it will automatically start the service for us. The next question we have is your web server is showing a 502 bad gateway error. What steps do you take to troubleshoot this? So first we will need to check the status and the logs of both your uh, web servers, let's say you are using Nginx for your web server and also your backend service that it proxies to like your PHP or um, hyphen FPM. So basically check the overall status and the logs of both these servers. Verify that the backend services are running and they are reachable so they are able to talk to each other. Check the configuration files for any misconfigurations and ensure there are sufficient resources that are available, which is your CPU and uh, memory. So, you know, these are some of the steps that we can uh, uh, do to uh, check why we are getting the uh, 502 gateway error. So making sure uh, all the servers are running as expected, uh, they're able to talk to each other, there are no misconfigurations, we can look at those. The next question we have is you need to schedule a recurring task to clean temporary files. How would you do this? So for this, we can uh, simply write a script which will clean the temporary files. So the script may, may be something like this. So rm-rf and then the path where temporary files are available. Once the script is ready, we will need to make the script executable. For that, we can make use of the chmod command, which can be used to set the permissions. Um, and then we will need to add a cron job to execute this script at the desired intervals. So we can use this cron tab e uh, uh, command to set our cron job and define when the script, script needs to run. All right. And then the script will start running on a schedule and start deleting the temporary files for us. The next question we have is you need to compile and install software from source. What steps do you follow? So 
the first thing we will need to do is we will need to download that source code tarball which is your compressed file and then extract it by making use of this tar command so tar hyphen x zf and then the uh, tar file name which will basically uncompress the files change into that extracted directory and then uh, we can read the readme file or the install file to understand the specific instructions that we have and post that we will so inside this extracted files you will have uh, scripts dot uh, configure script we can run that and then we can run the make command and then finally the make install command which can be used to install packages from source code the next question we have is you need to find and kill all processes started by a specific user how do you do this so for this we will need to first um, uh, get the process so we can make use of the ps command to list the processes running by the user so we can use ps hyphen u uh, and the username which will list the processes started by that specific uh, user uh, once that, that is done we need to pipe the output of that command to the grep and awk to extract the process ids so the the ps hyphen u command will give the process we need to get the process ids from there and then pass those process ids to the x args to kill command so uh, the the command would be ps hyphen u username pipe it to grep hyphen v pid which you know uh, looks for the process id and then awk print dollar one which will get the process id for us and then we pass that to the x args kill hyphen nine which will go ahead and kill the process the specific process started by the uh, user and that brings us to the end of our 15 scenario based linux interview questions along with their answers i hope you found this video helpful and that it boosts your confidence for your next interview if you have any questions or specific topics that you would like me to cover in the future videos, please let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more valuable content. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.